Thanks everybody for uh, attending today. And thanks for uh, being part of my group that uh, follows and reads my materials and gets online with me. And I really appreciate it. It's always fun to work with y'all. So today we're gonna do a little program on lead, manage and coach a winning team. And of course, uh, I always forget if you're interested, my, you can get my book on Amazon. I just want you to know that I'm not, you know, I make like six bucks on it, but uh, it, it is a good book to help you build your business. So if you're interested, check it out. So today, I uh, appreciate you being here, George Headley, Hard Hat Biz Coach, and uh, help a lot of contractors and clients over the years. And I'd uh, love to work with you in the future if I could. So let's get started here today. So some of you know, I started my construction company in 1977 and built it up, building mostly commercial buildings in Southern California and some in Las Vegas. Uh, and along the way, I started uh, coaching and speaking at meetings, spoke at World of Concrete 20 plus times and uh, built a lot of clients and potential clients and basically followers of my material and my education programs, my training. And uh, that's why we're all here today. You probably saw me somewhere. And uh, along the way, I, I've been doing a lot of coaching and I've got some peer groups. Some of you are in my peer groups and uh, love to talk to you about it if it's interesting. And then of course, uh, I have a, a, an online school. I just changed my website to hardhatbizcoach.com and I've got everything up there now. And I, my online courses, my books, uh, you name it, it's there. So, so give it a shot. So today we're going to talk about lead, manage, and coach a winning team, uh, how, to, how, to, how to move your team to the next level. And I know that's a tough subject. It's uh, hard for contractors to think about leading a team versus just getting work done, right? So that's, that's the challenge. And I had the cha same challenge years ago building my company. You know, am I a leader or a doer? And I was really a problem solver and a doer, and I wasn't really much of a coach and a mentor and a uh, you know, a trainer and an educator and a coach and a, a motivational guy. So uh, the question is, why are we here? Why are we here? We're learning how to be better leaders, managers, and coaches, right? That's hopefully the goal today. And uh, I, I love to think of myself as a coach. When I was building my business, I was just a worker. I was a hard-nosed worker, get it done, hurry up, how, when are you going to get it done? Uh, are you on schedule? Move faster. That was my uh, basically leadership style. And as I started uh, watching excellent coaches, now I know some of you don't like Pete Carroll. I think he's a great uh, person to, to emulate as a coach. And I realized that I have to be a coach, not just a teller, a doer, and a hard-nosed manager. So I look at Pete Carroll and I see him there motivating his team with his assistant coach or his offensive coordinator, his project manager, his estimator, whatever you want to call the number two guy in the picture there. He's the guy calling the plays and working with the players. The head coach is the leader, the manager, the visionary, the motivator, the inspirator. Uh, that's what the head coach's job is. They don't get on the field. They don't throw the ball. They don't even call the plays. They're just there as the leader and the visionary and to make sure we're moving to the next level. And then, of course, you've got other coaches like, like Belichick from um, the Patriots who've had a bad few years, but generally he's a great coach uh, and, and he's getting a lot of heat because his players aren't performing or does he have weak players? I'm not sure, but he's known as a hard-nosed, tough guy. But when you read stories about him, everybody loves him. He's a visionary. He tells you like it is. There's no soft sell. It's the bottom line. We got to get it done. So there's different styles of leaders. There's motivators, and then there's um, account accountable, hold, hold you accountable kind of coaches. So so in demanding. So so what are you? What do you want to be? So what are we trying to accomplish here? We're trying to make winning plays. I'm going to call the plays, systems, processes, procedures in my company, and I'm going to try to make them work so we can win. So as we think about our business, can you win by calling the same plays every time? Well, every job's different. People ask me for the standard systems. Well, 
It depends on your company, your customer, your job. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't do things the same way. But generally, we got to have a standard playbook. And we've got to have practice and training, mentoring and coaching. We've got to have a ranking system to know who starts and who sits on the bench and who gets the highest pay. So all those things the head coach has to be responsible for so that we can eventually get the right players in the right positions so we can win the games. So the question for you as you sit here this morning or this afternoon, what bold plays, new plays, will you call to lead, manage, and coach a winning team? Are you a winning coach? That's the key. So whether you're a leader, a manager, a coach, I just want you to think of yourself as a overall as a coach, a coach, right? So the dilemma we're in every day being contractors is it's just so much pressure. There's so much we have to do. There's, there's thousands of things that have to gel together to build a project, whether you're a subcontractor, civil or general contractor. Uh, what do we have to do to keep that ball spinning in the air, heading towards the target? So we get too busy. We're unfocused. We're out of control. We, uh, we, we really don't have a plan. We don't have time to plan. So we just react and put out fires all day. And of course, when we fight fires, we, it, it causes us really to slow down. We're running in place as fast as we can. As Yogi Berra, I just saw his uh, documentary, you know, we, we're totally out of control, but we're making good time. You know, that I can't remember his exact words, but really uh, we're not efficient and we leak money. And so it goes round and round and we continually lose money as, as we work harder and faster and run, run in place and we don't really get ahead. We don't change, we don't train, we don't try new things. We don't really have time to plan. We just keep crushing it. And of course that doesn't make you the most efficient you need to be. So what's the key here? Is it good people or is it to be a winning coach? So it's kind of chicken or the egg. If I have good people, I still need a good coach to direct them and lead them. If, I'm, if I don't have enough coaches or I'm a poor coach, I don't care how good my people are. It's not going to happen. So I've got to really focus on myself, improving myself. How do I become better as a leader, as a manager, and as a coach? And it's three distinct roles, three distinct roles. So think about your role in this process. So, so think about yourself. Effective leadership basically starts with you. You are the leader in your organization, in your team, in your department, uh, on your crew. Whatever your role is, you're the leader. So it starts with you. People follow you. Are you motivating? Are you inspirational? Are you mentoring? Do you take time to coach? Do you have a written strategic plan for your company? Um, it, and, and what we find is the number one problem in business today is what? Lack of leaders. Lack of people are willing to take charge and make things happen, achieve results. That's the key. Leaders, leadership's all about results. Do you achieve results? Or is it a lack of, uh, a lack of workers or a lack of employees? Well, it's both. So the question is, you know, your job as head coach, make sure you got the best players you can on the team so you can win the game. So that's got to be part of your process is to develop great talent, recruit, hire, train, retain, coach, mentor, uh, encourage your people. So that's part of the coach's role is to make sure they got a great team. So what are you doing about that? So what I have to do is change myself first. So are you a leader, a coach, or a manager? Let's just quickly talk about the three types of leadership, people, coaches, managers there are. First of all, we have leaders. We have leaders. The leader takes you to the next level. It continually innovates, moves to the higher level, improves the company, disrupts the status quo, does what they have to do to get to the next level. So that includes having a real clear vision. Uh, I help contractors develop a five-year vision. Where do I want to be looking back five years from now? 
or forward, where do I want to be? I have to have a vision that makes people want to follow. It's exciting. It's encouraging. And, and if I'm going to run a job as a project manager, what's my vision? What am I trying to accomplish here? What's your profit vision? What's your schedule vision? What's your customer service and satisfaction vision? What's your safety vision? What's your vision of how you're going to treat your superintendent and your project administrator, your team, your subcontractors, and how are you going to work together to all of us achieve the vision of a successful project, a win-win for everybody? So what's your vision? That's a leader. A leader focuses on a vision, of where, where we're going and how we're going to get there. And then we have a coach. Whether you have Golden State's uh, great coach, their great record, uh, and obviously you got great players. So what's a coach do? Training, mentoring, encouraging, leading uh, through through uh, team meetings and team attitude. Create a positive attitude, no negativity, no disruptive, dis disrespectful talk to it to your team so a coach is one who helps people become better that's really what they do and of course they have to win and they have to have a playbook and they have to have uh practice and and know what we're going to do and and strategy they have to have a strong strategy so a coach is more than just a nasty hard-nosed person pushing people just like a leader's not. And then, of course, what's left? We have a manager. So when I sit down with most contractors, I sit down with the owner and the key managers and maybe, maybe the project managers, maybe the foreman. And the role here is, what's my job as crew manager, project manager? The manager takes care of the details. The manager does the things and the activities and the tasks that need to get done on time, on budget, on schedule, safe. That's their job. So the coach is that gets the team together and makes them all want to improve. The manager gets the work done through doing it, delegating it, overseeing it, monitoring it, reviewing it, and making sure it's done right. So if you're a, a general manager and you have man, uh, project managers or foremen under you or estimators, What's your role as managing manager? Your, your role as managing manager is to make sure the people, your direct reports under you achieve the vision, of achieve results, perform, meet the deadlines, do their job. So you're more of an overseer enforcer than a doer. And then you've got the project manager or the foreman whose job is to do the work, lead the crew, help the crew, do some of the work, depending on crew size and job size. Uh, uh, oversee your, your direct reports, which could be your project coordinator, your project administrator, your estimator, your accounting manager, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we need all three. We need all three. So today is all about which part of this do I need to improve and which, which part of this do I need to take more accountability and responsibility for doing and implementing and enforcing and acting as a leader, acting as a coach and acting as a manager. All right. So that's where we're headed. So we've got a, about an hour. So, you know, I'm going to do it my best to cover, you know, 24 years of experience or 50 years of experience coming up with what I think is going to make you work. So effective leadership starts with you. So that's what I want you to think about. I've got to change myself first. If I don't change, my people won't change. The reason your people don't want to improve is because you don't encourage them and make them want to improve. The reason they show up late is because they don't want to be there on time for several reasons, but one of them is because you don't hold them accountable to be there. If they show up late, you just say, oh, well, try harder. That's not leadership. Leadership's motivating and encouraging people to want to do what you want them to do and achieve results, right? So let's let's think about it. So I always start with this three basic bullet points. Successful leaders, winning coaches, winning leaders, managers, 
they all do three things in common. Number one, they know exactly what they want. What do I want to accomplish today, this week, this month? They have a clear picture of the vision of where they want to go. They're not confused at all. And they have a plan to make it happen. So they have a plan. They have a written plan, step-by-step -step plan, playbooks, systems, uh, checklists, uh, rules, guidelines to achieve the vision of what they want. And then, of course, we have to continually keep track and continually move towards, make progress towards achieving the vision, the goal, what they want. So think about where you are. You know, I meet with companies and they they got a problem. They're, they, they can't get, uh, there's too big a punch list on the last three weeks of the job. Well, what do they want? They want no punch list. They want it all done when they're done. They don't want to have to come back. They don't want callbacks. So what's our plan? What kind of a plan can we come up with to encourage that the punch list is minimal on, on the last day of the job? Well, we could come up with a plan. Maybe it's a weekly punch list. Maybe it's a job walk every week. Maybe it's a, a change your subcontract or your general contract, whatever it is. And then we have to keep track of it. In order to make sure it's happening, we got to keep track of the punch list problem, for example, to make sure we're making improvement and achieving the results we want, which is no punch list. Maybe we put it into the incentive program. Maybe we put it on a weekly uh, management checklist or a monthly management checklist. So there's ways to fix the problems, but it all starts by knowing what you want and then building a plan to make it happen. So as we sit here, what do you think the top priority of leaders and managers is? Think of managers. Think of leaders. Think of strong leaders. What what are the leader? What do you think of when you think of you know a leader? I'll just pick Ronald Reagan. You think of the wall and you think of taxes, right? What do you think of when you think of um, uh, Newt, Newt Rockney, the great coach, winning? What do you think of when you think of uh, you know Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, scoring, uh, big of course, right? But he was a great scorer, and they won. They won some championships. What do you think of when you think of a leader, the 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 leader in your company? What do you think? Organized and systemized, achieving results, continual growth, continual improvement, or just keep running in circles? What do you think of when you think of a leader? What's the top priority of the leader? The leader's results is the key. The leadership results. Results are are uh, uh, results are a result of strong winning leadership. So all I have to do is look at your PL to tell me if you're a good leader. And I see a lot of PLs, probably a hundred a year from different clients of mine. And the ones who make money are usually, not usually, always the best, strongest coaches, leaders, managers. They make things happen. They hold people accountable. They motivate their team. They do what they need to do. They do the standards, like have a quarterly company meeting, like have an incentive program based on results. Like nobody, everybody follows the, the company's standards and systems. There's no excuses. So they, they, they achieve results. Just show me your PL. Uh, just show me your calendar. Just show me your job cost report on a job bid versus final. If you have profit fade, there's a problem here. You as the leader are not holding people accountable to provide accurate estimates, finish on time, plan ahead, et cetera, et cetera. So leaders get things done through people and achieve results. We remember leaders based on results. Think of the presidents. There's several you can't remember one thing they did, but there's many you remember lots of things they did, and that's what you remember them for. So think about you. So you've got a project, a company, maybe a crew, maybe uh, some team, a team that you got to manage. What results are you achieving? So let's start with the five things winning leaders and coaches must do. The first five things. So this is the key. I, after I prepared the whole program, I was woke up in the middle of the night. Go, wait a minute, I missed the point here. The point is number one. They got to achieve winning results through people. Show me your scorecard. Show me your PL. Show me your job cost results. Show me your schedule. Are you on or off schedule? 
we do things through people. I don't do it myself. I motivate, encourage, lead, coach, manage people to do and achieve the results, right? So it starts with the results. What's your vision of winning results? Then we have to communicate clear expectations of exactly what our vision will accomplish. So number one, vision. Number two, we have to communicate it with our team. And I don't see people communicating the vision enough. I, I, I'm working with several companies right now, and I did an employee survey, uh, and I asked, do you clearly understand the vision of this company and where we're headed? One out of 10 knows. The rest of them, the rest of them I, I think, I'm not sure. Then I asked the owner, do you think the people clearly understand the vision? They go, oh, yeah, once a year we tell everybody what it is. Well, once a year, come on. I can't remember what I did yesterday. It's constant communication is required by leaders. And if we clearly expect them to uh, never do change orders without a signed approval, then that's it. But we don't tell them once. It's a continual reminder, and it's a continual uh, oversight and training in the area of change order management, right? So we've got to have clear results, uh, expected results. Here's what I expect. Um, and then we have to influence them to achieve the results, right? And so uh, that requires implementing and enforcing strategies, systems, and your winning, I call it my do manual, my playbook, my company playbook. Here's how we do business. Every time we start a job, we have a job startup meeting with our customer, and we go through the list, the contract and the inclusions and the exclusions and how we're going to operate together. That's a clear understanding of how we do business. We always have a weekly subcontractor meeting. We always require our superintendents and foremen to do a look-ahead schedule. These are our standard systems inside of our playbook, how we do business. They're written, they're enforced, they're mandatory. I always say, or you don't work here. This is what we expect. And uh, if you can't do it all, then we'll give you a smaller task list to do, and so will your salary go down. We expect PMs to do this and superintendents to do that and estimators to do that and accounting, uh, full charge accounting managers to do this. It's expected. If you can't do it, step up and say, I need help, or I need training, or I just don't understand. Maybe it's too much for me. So we've got to implement, keyword enforce, we got to develop from first, but develop, implement, enforce strategy systems and your playbook. So my job is to lead, not do. I'm the leader. I'm the president. I'm the owner of my company. I'm the general manager. My job is to make sure my people do what's required, but I'm not getting on the field, calling the plays, and I'm not uh, you know, throwing the ball and running the football. Number four. One of my tasks has to be to have a great team with great players. So I have to take responsibility as the leader or the coach or the head, head manager of my company to build and develop top talent players and teamwork, positive attitudes. So I don't necessarily have to do the hiring or do the hiring program or manage the recruiting process. I just got to make sure it's getting done and we're finding enough people to fill the seats for our growing, expanding business. If I don't have any people, I can't achieve my profit goals. I want to grow every year as a vision. So I've, I've got to make sure that we have a program in place to build, hire, recruit, manage, train, develop top players, top talent, and teamwork among the team. Okay, got that? That's a responsibility of the head person, whether it's a coach, a leader, a manager, I don't care what you want to call them or yourself. And, and, and then lastly, uh, someone has to hold these people accountable. It usually starts at the top. If the top holds people accountable, everybody's accountable all the way down. But if the top's too wimpy or too soft and doesn't hold people accountable to perform, to achieve goals, to implement the systems, to show up on time, to do what they're supposed to do, then 
you're, you're, you're going downhill. Taught people have to hold people accountable. And a lot of entrepreneurial business owners who started their business don't have the personality that really likes to hold people accountable. We tend to let good old Joe off the hook, old friends, old employees. We don't make them do what we need them to do. And then we have disruption on the team of the new employees, the, mid, the, the middle and the, and the older employees that we've got a conflict. It's all or none. Everybody gets treated with accountability and responsibility. Okay, so that's the five-step overview. So let's get into some nuts and bolts here for a few minutes. All right, so, so when you hear the word leader, what do you think of? You think of someone who achieves results. When you look in the mirror, do you see a leader? I never thought of myself as a leader, even though I was. One of, one of my old uh, mentors, said, I, I, he says, George, why don't you ever present on leadership? I go, well, I don't know. I don't think of myself as a leader. I'm a doer. He goes, no, you're a leader. You, you lead people. You've taken your company from zero to 50 million in five years. That's leadership. You know, it didn't just happen. So, so let's talk about how you can help people become better leaders, coaches, managers. Well, I'm not a freaking manager. Well, you still know what you need to do, right? So let's talk about it. So, so what qualifies you as a leader on your crew or on your company? Uh, it's someone who people want to follow. It's not your title, your rank, your position. That, that was handed to you because they want you to step up to leadership. Now you have to earn respect. Leaders are chosen by those are chosen by those who line, oops, are chosen by those who line up to follow. If they don't want to follow, they don't want to do, they don't like your leadership. So what's your job? To encourage people. And of course, you know what the common denominator is in this whole program. It's people. I've got to work with people. I've got to make them want to do more. And so my job is to inspire, motivate, encourage players to follow. Do the, do the systems, do the responsibility, and achieve results. And so uh, I was a sixth grade uh, president in Longfellow Elementary School, and I'll never forget my first speech. Man, I'm so happy to be here. I want to thank my parents. They're in the iron and steel business. My mom irons, my dad steals. <laughs> That's one of my old hundred-year jokes. But uh, anyway, uh, so when you think of an effective leader, what do you think of? An aspiring leader. Uh, 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 people want to do what you want them to do. Uh, do they do what you want them to do? Or do they do what they want to do? Are you achieving winning, re winning results? So the question for you is, what do I have to do to become a better leader? So if you think of an effective leader, you know, just look at them. It's, you remember them for the good and the bad results. Some on this page, you remember the good results, and some remember the what did Washington do up top right? He crossed the Delaware, right? Or he threw a, whatever, whatever he did, you know, that's what we remember. We don't have any remembrance of what achievements, but we know he crossed the Delaware, I think. I'm not a historian. You know, you've got Nixon, you think about the negative, right? Uh, Lincoln, you, you think of the big thing, the big results he created. Uh, so as you go down the list, you got to think about you know, what are they remembered for? They're remembered for what they did or didn't do, right? The results. And so for you, think about what you're going to be remembered for, and it's going to affect your pay and affect your promotion and affect your well-being in life. And so what, what about you? Uh, how are you going to achieve results, winning results through people? So definition of leader. Uh, leader is a person leading and in charge of a company department group or team with a clear, inspiring vision. Vision. Here's where we're going and let's do it. You have a vision for your company, your vision for your department, your job, your, you know, uh, your crew. We want to be the best crew that always beats the budget on every job. Okay, that's a great vision. Uh, who, who leader who leads, direct, motivates. It doesn't say do. It says leads, direct, motivates, and influence others to want to follow. Keyword to want. And um, 
act, reach, common goal, and achieve results at a higher level. So part of this is continual moving to a higher level. So that's what I want you to think about. How are you getting people to want to do more than the minimum? Achieve a better result. Finish a week faster. Improve the labor budget by 5%. What are you doing to get people to want to do more? Uh, improve your accuracy in your accounting department or maybe in your job startup time frame, whatever it is, right? So your job is to think about uh, influence others to want to achieve results. So when I used to walk into my office in the morning, I'd turn on my motivator key. It's right here. See it right here? Key. Just turn it on. I walk in. I go, look, at my job now is to motivate these people to want to do better at a higher level. And so I've got to be the motivator, the inspiration. I feel like, you know what, I went to bed late. I worked all night and I got, got up early working on something for a deadline. And I come in, I'm all grumpy. And I got to turn on the switch, the leadership switch, the, the coach switch. Manager's a different deal. We'll cover that in a second. But that's my job. And so when we think about what we do, are you an effective leader and a manager? Um, uh, are you a head coach or a doer? Are you a head coach or a doer? So we've got uh, Pete Carroll, who's a motivator, and uh, Chris Kesky from Duke, who, you know, he just retired, but he was, he won everything. He, he was like the king. He was the Olympic coach as well. And he's a motivator. And look at him. He's, he's really in a stern way, encouraging his guys to do it. He's not bashful. He's a, he's a winner. And so what do they do? They have a vision. They get off the field. They delegate. They don't micromanage. They enforce and encourage. They monitor results. They stay in touch with their team. They meet with them every day. Um, they develop talent. They make sure the right people are in the right place, achieving the right goals. And they promote, te promote teamwork, motivation, practice, training. They hold regular scheduled team meetings. They have goals and scorecards and they have tracking systems to make sure we stay on track. They hold people accountable and they win. And so it's, it's are you a winning coach? Uh, what do winning coaches do? What do you do? They win games and they achieve results through people. So the key here is, is leading, managing, a winning coach. What do I have to do? First thing I have to do, notice, notice Pete Carroll. He's sort of on the field, but look at his offensive coordinator to his right with the playbook. Notice Pete Carroll does not have the playbook. He's delegated it to his offensive coordinator, who's calling all the plays and making all the decisions. Now, occasionally, Carroll will sit and talk to him and say, you know, this ain't working. Should we try something different? But the head coach, the offensive coordinator is calling the plays. That's your project manager. That's your supervisor. That's your, that's your leader. Now, but they do need some input, some mentoring, some coaching, some new ideas, a fresh perspective, and a kick in the you know what, right? So people follow the leaders. But it's not about control. Leadership and management is not about control or doing the work. The less you do, the more effective you are. When you're doing work, you're not leading and managing and motivating and encouraging. So think about your role is, is not about control. So people follow the leader. People follow the leader. People follow the leaders they want to follow. Your input equals their output. When you're positive, they become positive. When you're grumpy negative, they're looking for another job. They don't like working here and they're going to go through the motions and spend more money than they should because they, because they, they don't like you. So think about, are you an inspiring motivational leader people want to follow? Uh, and are you responsible for too much? Are you responsible for everything? Um, I had these signs made for all of my clients and it's, I, it's uh, stop solving other people's problems. And what I realized is most people want to solve everybody's problem rather than coach them through the problem. And so think about when you, when you carry a sign around your, your chest or your, uh, around your neck that says, I solve other people's problems, 
people just keep giving me more problems. And so when I bring, when I solve their problem, they bring me more problems. And the more problems I solve, the more problems they bring me. And then I finally realized people are responsible for nothing are responsible for nothing because they asked me to be responsible for solving their problems. The key is what's your solution? What's your solution? You know, when a guy or a gal brings a problem into me and wants me to solve them for them, they basically want to transfer responsibility to me. I, my job is to transfer it back to them and say, well, what do you think we ought to do? What do you think the right choices are? Give me a couple options of things that we can decide on. Okay, well, which option do you think is the best? Okay, we'll give it a shot. So, so I got to wean them off me. You know, the guys that sit there on a the phone all day are the worst leader, coaches, manager, bosses, superintendents ever. They're, they're telling their people what to do all day long. They should be coaching their people how to think for themselves and make good decisions. The more I do, the less effective I am. The more problems I solve, the less effective I am as a leader, manager, coach, mentor. I'm so busy solving other, other everybody's problems, I can't do my job, which is find, build, train, motivate, coach, talent, and achieve results through people, right? So do you continually solve other people's problems? Um, so I've stopped solving other people's problems. I've got a sign. It's right on the desk here. Stop. And, and what's your solution, right? So that's the key here. And uh, so if you've got too much on your plate, you're doing too much yourself, and you're solving everybody's problems, just stop solving people's problems. Ask them to solve their own problem. And so if you're maxed out, overworked, you're holding your business back. You're not never reaching. The more you do, the, the more you hold your company back, you got a shutoff valve. You're shutting it off. And uh, you, the goal is to get the monkey off your back. we got to get that monkey off our back. People keep giving you a monkey and it jumps right on your back, and they're waiting for you to solve their problems. Stop solving other people's problems. Delegate. Empower. Get that monkey off your back. It's The reason it's on your back because you want it on your back because you don't let those, those people make decisions. It's you, it's not them. The reason you got people problems because of you. Your input equals their output. So another thing I really hate is MBWA. That's an old uh, Peter's uh, principle uh, uh, saying, management by wandering around. I say, I ask clients, I say, how often do you meet with your project manager? Oh, I, I see them all the time. No, no. How often do you actually sit down and go through their their task list with them. Well, you know, I see them all the time. So me, what that means is when you walk around the office and you say, hey, Joe, how's that job going? Oh, pretty good. How are you doing with the schedule? We're, we're pretty good. We're pretty close. Uh, you got all those change orders signed that we were noticing the other day? Well, pretty much. Uh, are you are you making progress with the crew? Are they getting better? Well, so yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's probably going to work out. You know, they're, they just want to get rid of you. And so I finally realized that's a total waste of time management walk around. You got to sit down and go through the list. I'm sitting down with my project manager. Can I see your schedule, updated schedule? Can I see your executed contract, subcontract, uh, material order uh, list? Can I see your change order, request for change order versus the actual change order list? Can I see your submittal log? What, what, have, what have you submitted versus what do you have to submit? So I'm walking through the list of things that I know are critical and they've either done them or they're not, but they don't say, well, yeah, pretty much, which they're lying to me. They're lying to me. They're not telling me the truth. And so do you continually accept half truths and you keep walking on by it's just, and you know, it's going to come back to bite them and you know, they don't have it done. You just don't want to deal with it. You're not being a manager. You're not being a coach. If you're the head coach of a football team, the, they're, they're going halfway through the plays. Guess who gets fired? You do. It's on national TV. You, your players, there's no lies. You can see it. And so uh, when they say, well, I'll try, well, that's pretty much, well, hopefully we'll get her done. That is bogus. You can't accept those kind of words. And then, you know, the question is, it's not a maybe answer. It's a yes or a no. So I had these little signs made. Yes. So 
How are you doing on that job? You on schedule? Yes or no? None of this sort of. None of this I'm trying. None of this it's yes or no. So you have to you have to be play hardball. You're the head coach. If you don't win, you get fired. If if your people don't perform, you get fired. Well, being a little obnoxious saying that, but that's the reality of your head coach. So no more excuses. So when you, you know, I wish my people were more responsible. Why aren't they more responsible? Because they're not being held responsible. They're not being held accountable. You're letting them off the hook. You're not meeting with them. You're not holding them accountable. You're not reviewing the must-dos. A superintendent has some must-dos. A foreman has some must-dos. A county manager has some must-dos. Some estimator has some must-dos. You know, how many subcontractor bids did you get per trade estimator on a big general contractor job? Well, I didn't get any plumber. I got one plumber. Well, no wonder we didn't get the job. The goal, our company standard is three to four bids per trade minimum. Why didn't you get them? Well, you know, I called three guys. and called. No, that's an excuse. What are you going to do to make it happen? If you can't make it happen, I'm going to replace you. What do I have to do to get you to achieve results, right? That's the key. Okay, so I have to provide clear understanding of what's expected. Back to the same list again. Here's what I expect, three, four bids per trade. Here's what I expect. At the end of each job, we take the bid versus actual and we study it carefully and we update how we bid our cost history and our cost estimate template so we don't miss it again. We don't make a mistake again. It's a continual improvement process. That's clearly expected. I expect the, your bid, uh, your draft of your bid to review two days before bid date. No excuses, because I want to sit down with you and go through it two days before bid day, not the last minute. Clearly understood. You are accountable to achieve estimate. I'll we'll pick on the estimators. No missed items ever. So we need a scorecard, a field crew. We have to, here's your labor budget. We've got to hit it. Your the results you're accountable to achieve. Uh, we're, we bid it to make a hundred grand. We better make a hundred grand. That's what we expect. And if you're over or under, you're going to get compensated or decompensated based on results. Um, and so we've got to have clear written job descriptions monitored and enforced, keyword enforced. So the job description lays out the activities and the deadlines, and then we have to hold them accountable. Uh, we have to have a clear understanding of what my level of authority is, how much can I spend without checking with my boss, um, and, and who my boss is. I always ask, uh, who's that person? You know, I'm company with 40 people. Say, who? who? So who's the foreman meet with to review their pay? Well, I take care of that. Well, that's the owner. Well, then you're the only one accountable for the person. We need to push this down. We don't, uh, the offensive coordinator picks the players and who's going to play this game, not the boss. The boss might provide input, but the offensive coordinator's in charge of the crew. And, uh, you know, and how much they make. Well, that's a little bit of market driven in sports, but it's a little different. But anyway, so then we have to monitor, review, coach, mentor, train, and uh, empower and encourage and enforce, keyword enforce. All right. So in order to do that, we have to have a training in place. So we uh, uh, make sure that people are uh, competent and then we can trust and delegate and let go. So it takes, you know, step one, step two, step three. Okay. So what's next here? When I do it all myself, what happens? When I do too much myself, what happens? It doesn't happen. You know it doesn't happen. When you're doing too much yourself, you can't grow your stock. You're losing money. You can't make it happen. So when I delegate, I have to let grow go to grow to make more, make more dough. And so that's me about when I was like 50 there. I don't know, about 20 years ago, uh, probably 55-ish. And there I am sitting at my desk doing too much. Got too much on my plate and uh, holding back. And my company's getting held back. So I came up with this little stamp that said, please handle this and don't tell me what you did or I'll reply to an email now with that. Hey, just, just do it and don't tell me what you did. Don't, I don't want to know about it. Just get it done. You are 100% accountable to solve this problem. 
And so uh, I stopped solving other people's problems. I got to get off the field and I got to delegate and transfer responsibility. Okay, so what's next? What do we have to do? Leadership is about influence. There's me and my son at his graduation. And, uh, you know, I think about how did I get my kid to graduate? <laughs> That's a tough one, right? And so leadership is about influence of, influencing others to want to do what you want them to do. How do you get your kids to do what you want them to do? You know, it's impossible. Well, that's because we don't hold them accountable. Or we, we say, if, if you don't show up by 10 o'clock, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your car away. Well, we don't do it because it's a pain in the you-know-what to have to drive them around now. Tell them to take Uber. Well, that can't, can't afford that, right? So the key words to want. What do I have to do? So uh, leadership is about influencing others and make people want to do what you want them to do. That's the key. So how do we do that? How do we do that? They need two things. They need motivation and money. That's what people need. Money is the minimum required to get them to do the minimum. Motivation uh, uh, is the encouragement, the coaching, the mentoring, the helping, the helping them set goals, helping them achieve their goals through coaching. That's, that's the key here. If we just give them money and expect them to perform, it ain't going to happen. It takes both. They're equal. Money, motivation by their boss or by their direct leader, manager, right? So money without motivation doesn't work. So what's your role? Make it happen. So you've got, you've got a dog. You've got a dog. And we got to train the dogs, right? There's a cat. Crazy, huh? And when you say sit, they don't sit. We got to train them how to sit. We got to encourage them with treats and love and hugging and all those things. We just got a new puppy and we're trying to teach it a few things and it won't come yet. You know, you have to drag it with you. It's crazy. You'd rather drag than walk. So come on, come on, come on. You give them all this, the little love and they start coming, right? Coming towards you. And so what do we have to do with people? What do people really want? that'll make them want to do what you want them to do and achieve results at a higher level. So there's a few things, you know, money is, the, you gotta give them the money, but it's not the motivator. Uh, job security, a great company, those are great, but they're not the key motivators. What do you think the key motivator is? And I've already said it, number one is clear understanding of what's expected. If people know what you want, they'll get it done. They want rules, they want systems, they want standards. They wanna know what the accountability uh, playbook is. You've got to know that. What are we trying to accomplish here, the vision? Then they want some recognition and praise. They want their boss to thank them, encourage them, motivate them, uh, recognize them, praise them. So that's a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sitting there with Joe, and I said, Joe, way to go. Good job. I really appreciate the way you did that. Number three, they, they want to make, they want to understand the big picture. They, all they know is in construction, the job's almost done. Should I slow down or what? Is there more work for me? So I've got to have a continual communication program going where we share the big picture with the entire team on a regular basis. Uh, and so we try to do a quarterly all-team meeting. We try to do a monthly foreman meeting, a monthly superintendent meeting, a monthly project manager meeting where we share the big picture and we review the project results, et cetera. And number four, people got to know you care about them. They have a sign on their chest that says, with them, what's in it for me? I care about you. How can I help you get to the next level? And that's what Bill Belichick's really good at. He really sits down with his players and says, what can we do to get you better? What can we do to get you, you know, off the bench onto the field? What do you have to work on? How can we help you? I've got coaches that can help you, right? So I care about you. So that's my job as the coach, manager, leader in different levels. So I've got to lead, coach, trust, delegate, and let go. Those are some key words I want you to think about. So the question is, as we sit here right now, what are you going to start doing? And what are you going to stop doing? I know I probably triggered a few things in your brain. Take a moment, jot it down. What's some things you're going to do? I'm going to skip this one slide here. Oh, I'll just give you a quickie. What I notice is people want to improve, and uh, they, they, they're they pretty much stuck. 
and they realize they need help, whether you're an owner or a manager. And so they they say, I'm going to start improving. And um, they want to they, they want to start improving at a higher level. So they start improving and the reality sets in. This is hard. It's hard to change. So most people go back to their old ways. So what do I have to do to get to the next level? So when I work with people, I try to coach them through the changes and what it's going to take. And, you know, you really need a help, uh, someone to help you get through this, whether it's me or somebody else, a mentor, uh, you got to have somebody coaching, leading and training you. And so what's your solution? And I'm available if you want, this is my little promo section. Um, if I can help you, I, I know several of you on the line here, I've helped over the past. Hopefully I can continue to help, but, you know, and, and my job is just hold you accountable for improvement and get to the next level. So we usually start with phone sessions, Zoom sessions. But anyway, enough of that. So, so the question, let's move into more about your org chart and your people, and then we'll close out in, in, in a few minutes. So let's talk about, uh, we've talked about leaders and managers and coaching. Let's talk about putting it into function with your team. So we need to build an org chart. We need to have job descriptions. We need to have meetings. Let's talk about what we have to do to win the game of construction business. First thing is, do you have a written org chart? And if you don't, you better. The first, one of the first things I work on when I sit down with clients is, you know, their P&L, their money. We got to figure out their money. Then we got to look at their org chart to figure out what they have to do with people to get to the next level or to fix the problem they got. Fixing problems is simple. You either have more people or you spend more money or you do both. You know, if you've got, if you're overworked and you can't get it all done, what's the solution? It's not work harder. So I got to delegate. So I need more people, which costs more money, which frees up my time, which allows me to invest it into sales or marketing or customers or, or systems or, or training. But if I'm always doing the work, I'm stuck. So I've got to have a, a, a plan. First of all, I got to make sure I can afford it. And then I have a plan to move to the next level. I need your org chart. And so if you're a football coach, uh, I got to design my structure to win. What do I need? I need all these positions filled with the best talent I can find. And I've got to, I, and if I'm so busy, I don't have time for talent. I walk into some of my clients' offices. They've had a pile of resumes on the corner of their desk. I said, "What? I thought you were looking for a foreman. I am. There's my resumes. Have you even? When's when's the last time you looked at that pile? Well, about three weeks ago. Every one of those resumes, just give them to me. Let's throw them in the trash. You got to get on it, man. Get on it. You can't keep waiting for for you know some miracle from heaven to throw you some people. You got to be proactive. You got to do your part. And I don't have time." So what do I have to do? I got I to gotta have a team that will allow me to grow, allow me to, to get better, to build capacity. And so my slogan is put the right players in the right positions with the right talent and the right attitude. So, you know, the old line, they say hire for attitude, train for talent. And, and uh, exper experience helps too. Attitude and experience and you can teach them how to do it if they have some intelligence, right? Uh, you don't always need to hire from the top. The best employees that most of my clients have started at a lower level and moved their way up to from, from field worker to lead to foreman to maybe project manager or estimator and maybe general manager or general superintendent. That's how, the, that's how it works. If you're not willing to, to do that, you're, you're stuck. Uh, and it, we, we need the current and the future needs, and we got to grow and we got to make more money. So, what are you going to do about moving to the next level? A lot of people I'm working with, you know, they've grown over the last five years, and now they need a general superintendent. And I say, well, you got seven foremen. I can't one of them move up? And they go, no. I go, what are they all stupid? What's the problem here? Come on. One of those guys can be your future leader. We got to put them in there and try it, right? So you got to be willing. Well, then if I move them out of the field, I'll need another foreman. Yeah, that's the point. 
you got to always be hiring. You, I mean, you, you've got 40 guys on your crew. You can't, not one of those guys has the ability to be a assistant foreman that, that can grow into foreman. Come on, 40 guys, not one guy. It can't all be horrible. <laughs> I bet you three or four of them could be starting players in about three, two, three or four months, right? So we've got to make that happen so we can move to the next level. So we need an uh, 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 we, we need an org chart to manage this team. Uh, however big or small your team is, we got to get them focused. But I know what you're thinking. I don't have any smart players, so I got to have to start from scratch. Nope, that's not true. And uh, so we, another thing that happens is here's your org chart, and here's all the positions you need. And I'm sitting there thinking that I got to be in charge of so much stuff. I'm just overwhelmed with all the things I have to be accountable for. You hire a good superintendent. You don't have to go to the field more than once a week. But you got to go out there and micromanaging because you're in charge of everything. So what do I have to do to let go to grow? Let go to grow, get to the next level. And so are you stuck at the level of what you can do and control? Is your, is your performance valve on half shut because you're too busy? working on stuff you shouldn't be working on? Is this your role to everybody say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, all day? That doesn't work. Who's the guy at the end? I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, so are you overworked, doing too much yourself? What's the problem? Why aren't you willing to delegate and trust and let go? Come on, get on with it. How do you be a head coach if you're doing the work? If you're the quarterback, you can't be the coach can't see the big picture. You can't see the needs. And so are you wearing too many hats? I guarantee most of us are wearing too many hats. So what's your potential? <clears throat> I've shown this uh, slide a couple of times, but it's so true. Here's your business. Here's all, well, where do I want it to go? So here's all the sales opportunities that they're out there, but I'm not attacking them or getting them because of I don't have the right team. I don't have enough people. I don't have enough time. I don't have good systems. I don't have a good estimator. I don't have a good salesman. It's me and I don't get time to sell. So we got to bid all the bid against too many bidders. And, and so the goal is to eventually spit out some profit and grow, build some value. But there's a valve, what, sh what I call the shutoff valve. What's holding you back? And it's causing you to leak money, stop growth, and just not get ahead right? Uh, and build value. So what's the problem here? Most of the time, the shutoff valve is at the top. You know, and I think Drucker used to say, the, the bottleneck's always at the top of the bottle. And it's so true. But the shutoff valve, it, you crank it open or close based on what you do versus get rid of and delegate, right? So what can you do to get unstuck? Are you stuck at what you level of what you can do? Uh, what do I have to do to get to the next level to reach your potential? What do I have to do? What do we have to do? I got to open my shutoff valve. So let's start with your org, struck, org chart. Now, I, I don't have time to walk you through an old org chart development. You know, if you want me to help you, give me, a, give me a time and we'll set it up and we'll help you. But the point is, We've got all these people. We got to figure it out. So I've broken it down into four, five, six areas. On the left side is build wealth. Every company, and I don't care what side or where it is on the page, we have to have an investment wealth building program in place. You're not in business to build stuff. You're in business to build future wealth for you and the ownership of the company and the stockholders and the potential uh, key key executives in the company who are going to participate in the profit. So in order to do that, we have to dedicate some time and energy to that area of your future. Um, then we have to develop a program to win the right kind of work at high margins with loyal negotiated repeat customers who don't shop your bid or get too many bidders. We've got to have a plan to put in place to get you the right kind of customers projects, and bottom line profit margin. Then we have to have a, a, a program in place to develop accurate estimates with no missed items every single time. So pick the right jobs and go for them hard. 
Then of course we have construction operations. Got to get the projects and the contracts built and finished. So we need project management, field management, equipment management. We need we need a we need a program to make sure we project management. I call it project management mastery. Then we have to have our field, our superintendents, our foremen, our crews. We got to have a program in place to make sure that that mastery occurs. And then if you have some equipment, we want to take take care of it professionally, like a rental company would, not just a bunch of old equipment laying out in the yard we use. So we've got to get our operations shored up really strong. The next one is what I call team builder. Uh, team builder is talent development, team builder, whatever you want to call it. Somebody has, you know, director of player personnel in the, in the pro world, uh, football world, the person in charge of hiring, recruiting, uh, negotiating contracts, HR, uh, talent development, team building, uh, company events, promotions, reviews, culture. Someone has to be accountable in your company to, to make sure we've got the right talent pool and attitude and teamwork happening on a regular basis. And if that box isn't, uh, th these are not full-time people. These are just concepts what we need to manage your company. But if that box, that orange box there is not being handled properly, you've got a mess. It's hard to hire people. It's hard to recruit people. It's, it's hard to hold people accountable. There's no teamwork. People come and go. They're always asking for more money. What are you doing about building a great team? And then last is your support box, which is your, uh, which is your administration and finance and accounting. So administration, we have to have someone to uh, manage the, the, you know, the, the uh, documentation, the paperwork, the computers, the IT, set up the jobs, do the job costing, pay the bills, collect the money, do your financial statements, uh, keep your bonding company happy, handle the lawsuits, all those kinds of things. We need, we need a support team. So that's your, that's your basic program. It looks like a lot. If you only got three people, you got to do all this. Well, so some stuff's not getting done. But as you grow, some of this stuff becomes mandatory. So what am I going to do about talent development? What am I going to do about a job cost tracking scorecards for the, for the field crew? Someone's got to prepare those and someone's got to review them with the foreman. But if you don't do scorecards for crew production, you're Production is going to be at minimum 10 to 15% higher than it should be because people don't know where they are. I mean, if you don't know where you're going, you're going to take a lot, long, lot longer to get somewhere, right? So that's the key. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about. And where do I need help? Where do I need help? Um, I need help uh, in several places. So as I think about it, uh, I, I got where do I need help? Maybe I need project management. Maybe I need in the field. Maybe I needed uh, estimating, uh, maybe support. So anyway, what roles and responsibilities should you stop doing? You. What roles and responsibilities need to be assigned, hired, or replaced? Adios, amigos. Or lastly, uh, what new positions will allow your business to improve? So that's really what you have to ask yourself on a regular basis. So where am I? Do I have an org chart? Do I know what I need to do? Do I have a plan to grow? Do I, can I afford it? Do I have a good financial plan in place to develop my overhead and profit goals? So just to see what I can spend to achieve my vision. And, uh, and, and oh, by the way, the pizza rule of management, the pizza rule is simple. You can only manage six people, five or six people. So if you have five or six direct reports, you're maxed. That's it. Five or six. And I see a lot of company owners and presidents with 12 people reporting to them. It's out of control. And no supervisor, no foreman, just 12 field crew members. Or, or they got a, a two people in estimating, they got three project managers, they got six superintendents, they got a couple in accounting, a couple admin. Boom. Nothing works. Just remember, pizza. You can only first serve six people usually unless you've got a bunch of little kids. And so what we have to do then is design, oh, oh by the way, we need an executive assistant. 
if you own a company or you run a company or you run a big department, you need an assistant. It's not full time. It can be, but it doesn't have to. You need someone to help you organize the chaos and the team and the and all the stresses you have and all the assignments you get you have. So what we want to do is uh, ask myself, what am I worth? Am I worth more than twenty bucks an hour? I don't know. Everybody's in a different city. Fifteen to thirty. Well, I think I am. If I do. 10 million a year or 12 million a year, I got to bring in a million a month. That's my monthly nut. I'm going to divide that by 160 hours and do the math. It's a thousand bucks an hour. I think you can afford 30 bucks or 20 bucks, right? So let's build a, uh, let's build an org chart. What, you know, get rid of some stuff, right? So let's build an org chart. So a flow chart. I mean, so we got, we start with a flow chart, how we bid, then it comes in and it goes over here. Then we have a pre-job startup meeting, then we have a turnover meeting, and then we write subcontracts, and then we set it up in accounting and set it up in our project management software, and then it goes over construction, and, and we, we have a flow, a national natural flow. So we want to set up a flow chart to help us develop that org chart. And, you know, I've done them with several companies, and we just sit up there on the board and start drafting out and uh, come up with a flow chart, and then I eventually put it into a little worksheet. Now, uh, the flow chart, I mean, you can do it. You, if you look, you got your sales meeting, bid meeting, estimating. Then we turn it over to pre-construction. Then we turn it over to turnover meeting. Then we get a project manager. Then we got administrator and, and superintendent of foreman, right? And uh, it's simple. What do we want to do? And at each level, what's the standard practices that we require for each person on the team? So uh, you got to have clear understanding of what's expected. I got a flow chart with clear understanding of what we have to do to get to the next point in our process. Uh, if you're a crew, you got to know what you're doing. Uh, if you're a head coach of USC, you, you better do something right or you might get fired with your brand new uh, big salary uh, and new role. And uh, not too, nobody's too happy. I went to USC. None of my friends are too happy. So everybody's got to know what's expected. And uh, that's the key. And so the key is then we need clear understanding of what's expected. So we need clear guidelines. We need to have written systems and standards and processes. We need to have clear expectations, clear gear, uh, the expected results. What results do I expect? A, what are you accountable to perform and when? And lastly, uh, uh, responsibilities, activities, and deadlines. So every week I've got to do this. Every month I've got to do this. It's real clear what each person in my company is required to do. So one of the things I do, uh, I've done several times, a lot of guys I, and gals who I work for or, or with who, hi, who hire me, uh, you know, what, what should my bookkeeper do? They don't know. They, were, they start in the field. So I give them a list of what I want every week, every month, and every quarter, and every year. It's a list. It's a it's a running list of must haves every week. I, I have a accounts receivable report. I got to have this report. I got to have that report. So that's the key here, right? And so in football, there's plays. In 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 construction, there's standards, job descriptions. There's clear accountabilities. There's clear results. There's responsibilities, and there's chain of command and level of authority. And then the manager's role is to manage, coach, mentor, monitor, review, train, and enforce. That's the key. And so we, we, we work together to create clear position job descriptions. We get the team together. Here's a company I worked with a few years ago coming up with the job descriptions. And here's another company we just did the job descriptions with a few months ago. And we get everybody working together. There's all the uh, accounting and admin over on the right and on the left are the or the project administrators, and, and we just continue to work. There's the estimators and the project managers on the left there coming up with their job descriptions. That's the key. We work as a team. We develop the position descriptions for each position, project manager, superintendent, crew foreman, accountant, bookkeeper, estimator, right on down the line. And then we make sure that each person has a boss that's monitoring, managing their direct reports. So each direct report must meet with the, their direct reports every week and review the, the tasks and responsibilities clearly defined on their job description. Project manager, schedule, submittals, shop drawings, uh, billings, 
invoices, change orders, requests for information. We go through the whole list to make sure our guy or a gal, project manager, is doing what they need to do to achieve their bottom line goal, right? And then we hold, uh, hold them accountable. We enforce the systems. We coach, train, mentor if they need some help. And we monitor their workload to make sure they can maintain the, the, the bottom line. Okay, so we have those scheduled meetings. So here's some meetings that I think most people in this room should have. Daily, we meet with our assistant for our direct admin report. And we go through the list, what needs to happen today and tomorrow. Every week, we meet one-on-one -on -one with our direct reports to make sure they're following the rules and doing the systems and meeting the deadlines. And uh, so all reports, team meeting. We have a team meeting. So all the PMs together, all the supers, all the form every, every week. Some are doing every two weeks. Uh, and we, every week we have a job walk where the PM, the super, and the foreman walk the jobs to make sure we're on budget, on track, on schedule, quality control, punch list, safety. And uh, every other week we have all the foremen together or all the supers together for all the PMs together to have a team, uh, you know, uh, uh, an overview results meeting. And then monthly we have a management team meeting. So that pretty much, oh, excuse me, quarterly, all company meetings. So that pretty much lays it out. And, and you may want to tweak this some, I'm not, these aren't, these aren't the gospel, but this is sort of a general overview of what I see works and what I recommend that works. Okay, let's finish up here. Uh, so what do you want? Why are you here? Why are you still here? Uh, most people get to a level and stop growing, stop improving, and they get the same results. Some people continue to a next level because they wanted to get better results. So this is what I call the leadership effective, effectiveness gap. What do you want? Do you want better or same? So in order to stay the same, you just keep doing the same. To get better, you have to do business different. What are you going to do to get to the next level? That's the key. You have to decide what actions am I going to change, improve, eliminate, add. And then, of course, if we look at the big picture, uh, you have to decide. Are you going to do it or you're not going to do it? Quit thinking about it. Quit trying to do it. It's yes or no. Remember the old yes or no? Yes or no. So five actions. Review, then we're, when we're finished. Achieve winning results through people. Results. Number two, communicate clear expectations. Number three, implement the strategy systems and playbook. Number four, top talent. Develop your talent. Make it a priority. Number five, hold people accountable. Enforce your systems. Make sure they're doing their job.